Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs with a little problem with the VA mode of the 121GW multimeter. Well, viewer Joe Smith noted that there is something wrong with the way the VA mode is implemented in the 121GW multimeter. And for that I made a little drawing just to show you the root of the problem and we will make some uh, measurements to verify this. And Joe Smith also supplied a very clever remedy how to get away with the problem, but we'll come to that later. Now, this is the setup, how you connect your device under test when you're doing VA or watts or power measurement. Um, first of all, your power is connected here onto the upper side of our device under test, which shall be for this purpose simply be called the load resistor or resistance. And then on the one side, the current is flowing here through the shunt resistor through the internal fuse of the multimeter. By the way, in the dashed box, that is what is inside the, the multimeter and then flows out of the multimeter at the common connection down to ground or the negative terminal of the power which supplies the load. And simultaneously, you tap off the voltage over your device under test and feed it into the volts input or terminal of the multimeter. And so internally, the multimeter measures here at the amps or milliamps input, the current, so there's nothing wrong with that. And simultaneously, or probably with a multiplexer in sequence, it measures the voltage, but the voltage is referred to this point and this is not the voltage measured over your load, but the voltage measured over your load plus the shunt resistor plus the fuse resistance. And depending if you're using the amps, milliamps or microamps input, the shunt resistor is either 10 milliohms, 1 ohms or 100 ohms. And the fuse, depending also on the input, is either in the milliohms range or between 1 and 2 ohms for the milliamps and microamps input. And we can verify this twice. First, by looking at the schematic, which is open source. And second, we will uh, measure it. Or let's start with measuring the, the shunt resistance in the amps and milliamps terminal. And you can see we have all in all in the milliamps region, we have 2.88 ohms. I've not nulled out the resistance of the test leads and the contact resistance. So let's leave this at 2.8 something. And in the microamps range, we have 102.8. And if we go to the amps terminal, that should be a few milliohms. Yeah, 50 milliohms minus the lead ohmic lead resistance minus the contact resistance. So we have, we have three different shunt resistors depending on the input terminal and depending on the range. And uh, so this already verifies the problem, which is nothing else but the voltage that is developed here is nothing else but the burden voltage. And while I shot the video about the um, the VA mode, I had the same thought as Joe. I thought, well, what about the burden voltage developing over the shunt resistance and the fuse resistance? Do they subtract it internally because it's more or less a known value to the multimeter, depending on the input terminal and the switch position? Or do they neglect it because the multimeter is advertised as low burden, but we will later see no, this is a systematic problem uh, with the me measurement and you can can't get rid of it, but we'll come to that in a minute. Just let's just take a look at the schematic. All right, here we have a part of the schematic and I've marked the path of the current measurement in green if you're using the milliamps or microamps terminal. 
So it first of all goes through the fuse, which as we saw has a resistance of around 1.8 ohms. Then it goes here into the switch, the rotary switch. And the whole switch is here marked in uh, yellow or kind of sand-like uh, color. So it goes here. Now we're having, as you can see, the switch mode in the VA position. Then it goes along here, down here to the left, and then through our 1 ohms shunt resistor plus the 10 milli ohms shunt resistor. So all in all it's 1.01 .01 ohms shunt to analog ground, and analog ground is connected to the common terminal. Uh, so that's the path for the current. And for the measurement, it goes from this point here, from the 1.1 ohm shunt resistance upwards to A out, which stands for amps out. And it is then fed first of all into a multiplexer. And we still have the so-called burden voltage circuit, which is nothing else but a times 10 precision amplifier. So the multimeter selects e either the times 1 amplified signal or the times 10 amplified signal. So that is uh, the verification that also in VA mode uh, we of course get our shunt resistance. And you can find out for yourself if the rotary switch is in the microamps position that then the 100 ohms resistor is added and we get all in our 101.01 ohms shunt resistance plus the fuse resistance. We cannot neglect that. My first thought is could the multimeter subtract the burden voltage? Well, it cannot. Although the shunt resistance is known to the multimeter by the range selector and by the used input terminal, which has its own sensing circuit, so the multimeter knows which terminal you are using, it knows which shunt resistance is used. But the fuse resistance is something of an unknown. For example, in the manual it's given as around 1 ohms, but we've seen it's 1.8 ohms. And depending on the type of fuse and if it already has heated up or not, the resistance is quite, a, quite variable. And so it wouldn't be a good idea to try to subtract the burden voltage by taking an assumed resistance for the fuse. Better is not to subtract anything at all, but to live with the burden voltage. I think that was what Dave thought. What should he do with the burden voltage in VA mode? So next is we'll make an experiment to demonstrate really that the error intro introduced by the burden voltage in VA mode can be much larger than the 1% given accuracy of the VA mode. So how do you say the proof is in the pudding? So let's uh, explain how I've connected here the multimeter and the resistance box. So power comes in here through the red lead. It goes into the RLC box and I've selected an, a resistor of 22 ohms and I'm feeding in exactly one volt. And here it comes out, goes to the milliamps terminal of the multimeter and then out again out of the common terminal back to the power source in the black lead. And the voltage is tapped off just as told in the manual, here at the high point of the load, our 22 ohms resistor is our load, and goes into the volts input of the multimeter. And now look what we get displayed. Voltage, let's wait a minute again, okay, let's wait a second, 0.9957, so let's round this up to one volt. But if we measure with a separate multimeter, as you can see with the two black leads, it measures exactly the voltage over the load. It's only 0.88 ohms. So that's 12% off of the true value. 
while we can be quite sure that the displayed current 40.16 milliamps is correct, and we can even calculate this 22 ohms plus the 2.8 ohms internally of the fuse and the shunt resistance gives 24.8 ohms, or let's round this up to 25 ohms, and by Ohm's law, 1 volt divided by 25 ohms, what does it give? 40 milliamps. So the, the amps or milliamps display is absolutely correct, but the volt display is 12% off and thereby, of course, the product, the multiplication of the two values is also 12% off. We don't have 40 milliwatts or milliVA. In fact, we're having 0.88 times 40 milliamps, which is something around 35 milliwatts. So this is cl a clear display that by the action of the burden voltage inside, we get a completely, well, not completely, but a comparatively false result. And the relative error is simply the, the, the ratio of the load resistance to the shunt resistance, including the fuse resistance. And we could even uh, get a 100% error if, if we go down to, let's say, uh, 3 ohms, then the load resistance would be in the same range as the shunt resistance, and this would give 100% error. So, at least you have to know this, but as I told you, Joe Smith has thought out a very clever way to get away with the burden voltage in the VA measurement. So, this is what Joe suggests. It's a simple reversal of the usage of the common input and the milliamps input, and I had to think for one minute or two to understand that he's really correct. So, let's follow the path First of all, the voltage is tapped off again at the positive or upper end of our device under test. But now comes the trick. To get a correct voltage of the voltage over the device under test, we're tapping off the, or we're connecting our common input with the lower side of the load and then the current flows out through the shunt resistance over, over the, the amps or milliamps terminal down to ground. The only thing that now happens is here we measure a positive voltage and because the current flows in this direction we get a negative current but the sign doesn't matter in the measurement. Ah, we will see if, if the sign appears and gives a negative VA uh, display. But anyway, think for yourself for a minute that, that this is the correct way to get rid of the burden voltage. Because now the voltage is really measured over our load and not over our load plus shunt and fuse resistance. And the current only flows this way, and it, although it flows in the kind of wrong direction through the shunt and fuse resistance, that doesn't matter. It measures the correct value. So, here we are. Same setup as before, but I've exchanged the leads from the common and the milliamps input. And now let's compare. We have 0.88 volts over our load resistance, same as before, and what do we get displayed? 0.88 volts, so the right value, and we get the minus 40 milliamps, same value as before, but now the multiplication gives the right value, 35 with, even without the, the minus uh, sign, so it, the multimeter even recognizes that this is, in fact is a positive power, so a simple change in setup gets away with the burden voltage. So that was an ingenious idea by Joe Smith and uh, I think every user of the 121GW has to thank him for that idea and it should get the attention of uh, Dave Jones that he perhaps suggest 
this in the manual of the 121GW as an alternative or better way to connect your load in the VA mode. So if you found it interesting, please give it a big thumbs up or consider to become a Patreon. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.